I will do my best. So uh, today we, I will speak about uh, my systematic review with uh, my team. Uh, we work in the outpatient and implantology department in I want this one, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, with our team uh, in the outpatient department and implantology of dental faculty of Monastir from Tunisia. So I will walls, irregularities in the floor, residual ridge absent or thin between three and six millimeter or less, and gingival final tip. One study uh, showed thicker uh, sinusal membrane e in people with thick periodontal type. Technical, stretching the membrane beyond is, uh, its physical tolerance limits, inappropriate application of uncontrolled forces in experienced surgeon, use of bar, bars or conventional rotary uh, instruments, and finally the simultaneous implantation approach showed a higher frequency of perforation uh, of the uh, Schneiderian or sinusal membrane. That's why a systematic review uh, of uh, literature was done in order, to, uh, uh, in order to answer at this question, how to manage sinus membrane perforation for long lateral sinus lift. Objectives are to know the techniques for managing sinus membrane perforation following a lateral approach sinus lift, to compare the effectiveness of these techniques, and finally, to deduce the most effective protocols. Materials and methods. The research strategy, and we began by an electronic search, which was conducted in three electronic database, Cochrane, PubMed, and Google Scholar. The search included studies published in English and French, because we speak in French in Tunisia, published between January 2000 to January 2022, so 22 years. Zotero was used as a software for managing bibliographic references. The search used the following key terms, combined with Boolean operators, as you see here, maxillary sinus floor augmentation or sinus lift surgery and membrane perforation, sinus lift surgery and membrane perforation or membrane, membrane tear, maxillary sinus floor elevation and membrane repair or membrane manage, manage it, management. Sorry. What is the inclusion criteria in our systematic review? Clinical studies, which report number of patients included, number of sinus lift performed, number of perforations produced during sinus, sinus lift, implant survivor rates. Also randomized controlled clinical trials, human studies with sample size greater than 15, the uh, maxillary uh, sinus lift augmentation using the lateral window technique, studies involving perforated membranes, Studies reporting the therapeutic op options adapted to resolve the membrane perforations, follow up at least six months, articles published in English or French. What about the inclusion criteria? Non-human studies, articles not in English, German or Spanish, studies for which the full text, full text was not available, and case reporters. So we will discuss the results and uh, we will discuss the techniques. So we found 1,639 articles distributed as follows. So 54% for, uh, for Cochrane, 27% PubMed, and 19% for uh, Google Scholar. So, as you see here, the flow chart, the initial, initial electronic search for the management of Niderian membrane perforation procedures, applying the lateral window technique, located 1,639 articles. Uh, uh, we eliminated 
after uh, read uh, duplicates, we obtain 1,020. Uh, two, uh, two th 221 and after selected uh, after reading the titles we selected 131 and finally we obtained only 31 articles that described the techniques of uh, resolving the problem of perforation uh, membrane uh, and respecting the inclusion criteria so what is the patient ca characteristics so a total of 6,605 patients with an average age of 41 and a half years undergoing 7,548 uh, 7, sinus lift procedure using a lateral approach. And we have 9,384 implants were placed simultaneously and we obtained, uh, the uh, one, uh, they obtained 1,821 one, uh, perforation, which is the incidence of 24.2%, uh, which is in correlation with the literature because the incidence varies uh, from 7 to 6, 60%. The distribution of sample, sample by uh, the uh, perforation of sinus membrane, we based our study on the classification of Hernandez Alf Alfaro. We have the class one perforation inferior than five millimeters, between five and 10 millimeters, and superior than 10 millimeters. So different treatments were used to resolve the perforations, including uh, post-perforation clot formation, collagen membrane, membrane sutures, uh, PRF, uh, hemostatic agents, etc. But to resolve the problem uh, of uh, uh, perforation inferior than five millimeters, the best choice is, is first of all, the uh, the uh, the, uh, Schneider, uh, the the uh, collagen membrane. After that, we found as equal the clot, so the abstention and the sutures. For the diameter between five and ten millimeters, the best choice uh, by our our uh, systematic review, we found 39% for collagen membrane. After that, surgery cell, hemostatic sponge, and sutures in the third place. For the diameter, the huge diameter, uh, superior than 10 millimeters, the best choice is the, uh, the uh, collagen membrane. And after that, the buccal fat pad. The buccal fat pad is loca localized in the uh, retro maxillo zygomatic uh, region and after that we found the uh, surgery cell so we will discuss all these techniques what is first of all the schneiderian membrane it is a thin layer of silicated uh, pseudo stratified epithelium and highly vascularized uh, connective tissue the healthy sinus membrane has an average thickness of uh, 90 uh, micromillimeters plus less 40, uh, 45 micromillimeters. So we found in our re systematic review that the best choice for the, to repair a small to medium uh, perforation of sinusal membrane uh, inferior than 10 millimeters is the collagen membrane and we found that the implant success rate found in our systematic review varies between 92% to 100%. It serves to st stabilize blood clots and protect the membrane while accelerating the healing process. So as you see, as you see in this table, so the uh, articles of Bar, uh, uh, Barbu et al. and Alfro, Lee, Eric, and Chukel et al. 
so I will present a case report that I have uh, do in uh, I, I did it in our uh, department. It's about uh, 51 patient who consults me to uh, the rehabilitation of the right upper upper uh, upper uh, right maxilla. So the coronal section, as you see here, showed us the insufficient uh, height of uh, infrasinusal uh, height. We have uh, three millimeters, four millimeters. So the technique was the sinus lift by the approach, uh, lateral approach technique. The detachment of uh, mucoperiosteal flap the bony window, as you see here, and I began the detachment of Schneiderian membrane. Unfortunately, as, sorry, unfortunately, as you see here, the perforation uh, inferior than five millimeters. So I used a collagen membrane under the perforation over the perforation. So, I have this situation before three millimeters, and after six months, you saw here, you see here the increase of height from three millimeters, four millimeters to eight millimeters. It's a second patient an edentalist patient aged of 65 years. As you see, the total absence of infrasinusal thickness here, height, height here. So, the problem here, after removing the window bone, I didn't find a Schneiderian membrane. It's totally absent as you see here. So I decided to create a sinus wall with the collagen membrane. I do this technique and I put my uh, bone substitute here, as you see. I don't have uh, the photo of uh, uh, removing the uh, window bone and uh, also uh, uh, collagen membrane. But as you see, before the sinus lift by a, a lateral approach, we don't have anything here. But after three, sorry, but after the three months, we obtained a regeneration of bone of one and a half millimeters, only one and a half and, uh, millimeters. So we will uh, move now to the second uh, uh, technique, which is the sutures. The treatment technique chosen was determined by Barbo and all, et al. The location of the perforation along the side window was important in terms of surgical access to ensure a seal. The size of the membrane perforation was important because of the distance between the edges of membranes to be joined and the greater the rupture of the membrane, the greater the risk of further perforation. Uh, sorry. So in our systematic review, we found that 54% others decided to suture the sinus membrane when the perforation is small to medium in size. Mm -hmm. 20. 28 only used the sutures, and the survivor implant rate was uh, ranges between 8, 80, uh, 85 to uh, 90%. And 64% uh, sutures with collagen membrane combined to uh, collagen membrane. We found that the uh, rate survivor of implants increased between, 20, uh, between 92 to 97%. So I will move to, I will be brief because I don't have enough time. So the third technique is 
PRF membrane. PRF membrane, Barbu et al. Uh, treated nine perforation of sinusal membrane and found uh, 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 implant uh, survi uh, survival percentage of 100%. So we should know that PRF can, use, can be used to repair Schneiderism and brain perforation, optimize the healing process, and even for use a single material for new bone formation in the maxillary sinus. PRF has a sticky consistency, being a natural fibrin uh, sca scaffold, which does not induce a foreign body reaction as, uh, as is the case with, with collagen membranes. So, many others speak of the efficiency of PRF membrane. I represent my own case report. Here we see uh, it's, this, it's uh, a, a patient aged of, uh, f uh, I, I think, uh, 58, 58 years old. Uh, he consulted for the rehabilitation of the canine, the first and second, and the uh, first molar, uh, upper right molar. So here we have two problems. We have a problem of lack of thickness, as you see here, in uh, the place of the canine, the first premolar and the second premolar. And we have also an efficient infra-sinus height uh, inferior than three millimeters. To resolve the problem of the uh, lack of thickness, uh, I, I, I take it uh, at an uh, autogenous uh, some feasible uh, graft. Sorry. As you see here, corticospongious graft. And I put surgicel here. So, when I, uh, did, uh, when I do the, uh, the, I move the Schneiderian membrane, you can see here, it's not very clear. I perforated the Schneiderian membrane. It was about uh, inferior than 10 millimeters. I, uh, I, I take, I take the, uh, I take the bone window at place. And after that, I created the PRF membrane, as you see here. And here, I stimulated the bone to put my corticospongious graft. I fixed the graft, and I put the uh, bone substitute in the uh, space uh, below the, uh, uh, below the, uh, under the, uh, the uh, PRF membrane. Sutures, hermetic sutures. After two months, the increase, here the increase of thickness in vestibulolingual direction and also the increase of height here. So I treated the perforation with the uh, membr uh, PRF membrane and the window bone. So we will move now to the surgery uh, cell, which is the third uh, techniques by our systematic review. I have uh, two minutes. So I will move. I will move now to the amniocorion membranes. Uh, it was described by Holt, Holtzklow. It, uh, he treated nine perforation of membrane and obtained uh, uh, survivor rate, implant survivor rate of 96 percent. 